live from Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's The Cube. Covering OpenStack Summit North America 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat, the OpenStack Foundation, and its ecosystem partners. Hi, and welcome to SiliconANGLE Media's production of The Cube here at OpenStack Summit 2018 in Vancouver. I'm Stu Miniman with my co-host, John Troyer. We're here for three days of live wall-to-wall -wall coverage at the OpenStack Foundation's show they have twice a year. John, pleasure to be with you again. Uh, you and I were together at the OpenStack show in Boston a year ago. A little bit further uh, trip for me, but uh, with views like this, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not complaining. Hey, it's a great time to be in Vancouver. Uh, a little bit overcast, but the convention center is beautiful and the people seem pretty excited as well. Yeah, so if you see behind us, there's the, the keynote let out. So, John, we got to get into you know, the, the first question, of course. For some reason, the last month, people are always, oh, hey, Stu, where are you, what are you doing? And when I walk through the various shows I'm doing, when it comes to this one, they're like, why are you going to the OpenStack show? You know, what's going on there? Isn't that been replaced by everything else, uh, you know? Yeah, I got the same thing. There seems to be kind of a, almost an anti-religious uh, thing here in the industry, maybe more emotional perhaps than other projects because it, it although frankly, look, we, we're, we're going to take the temperature of the community, we're going to take the temperature of the projects, the customers, we've got a lot of customers here. That's really the, the key here is that are people actually using this, being productive, functional, and is there enough of a vendor and a community ecosystem uh, to, to make this uh, go forward? And, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So three years ago when we were actually here in Vancouver, the container sessions were overflowing, people sitting in the aisles, you know, containers, 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 docker, docker, docker. Uh, you know, we went through a year or two of that. Then Kubernetes, really a wave uh, that, that has taken over this piece of the infrastructure stack. Um, the KubeCon and Cloud Native uh, Con shows uh, in general, I think it surpassed this in size. But as we know in IT, nothing ever dies, everything is always additive, and a theme that I heard here that definitely resonated is we have complexity, we need to deal with interoperability. Everybody has a lot of things, and that's the, choose your word, hybrid, multi-cloud world that you have, and that's really the state of open source. It's not a thing, it's there's lots of things, you take the pieces you need, and you figure out how to put them together, you either buy them from a platform, you, you have some integrator that helps, uh, so somebody that puts it all together, and, and that's where you know we live here, which is, by the way, I, I thought they might rename the show in the open, and they didn't, but there's a, there's a lot of pieces to discuss. Definitely an open infrastructure movement, we'll probably talk about that. Look, I, I loved uh, the message this morning that the cloud is not consolidating. In fact, it's getting more complicated. And so that was a practical message here. It's a little bit of a church of open source as well, so the open message was very well received, and these are the people who are working on it, of course. But yeah, the fact that, like last year, I thought at Boston, there was a lot of, almost confusion around containers, and where containers and, and open uh, and Kubernetes fit in the whole ecosystem. I think now in this year, in 2018, I think it's a lot more clear, and, and in, OpenStack as a project, or a set of projects, which traditionally was, the, the, the hit on it was that it was very insular and inward facing, has, has at least, is trying to become outward facing. And again, that's something we'll be looking at this week, yeah. and how well do they integrate with other open source projects. I, I mean, John, you and I are both big supporters of the open source movements, love the community it shows like this, um, but not exclusively, it's, you know, Amazon, participating a little bit, using a lot of open source, they take open source, make it as a service. Uh, you were at Red Hat Summit last week. Obviously, huge discussion there about everything open source, everything. Um, so, a lot going on there. Look, let me just set for, first of all, the foundation itself in this show. Uh, the thing that I liked uh, coming into it, one of the things we're going to poke at, is if I, if I go up to the highest level, OpenStack is not the only thing here. They have a few tracks, uh, they have an edge computing track, they have a container track, and there's a co-resident open dev show uh, happening a couple of floors above us. And even from what the, open, uh, the OpenStack Foundation manages, yes, OpenStack's the main piece of it and all those underlying projects, but they had Kata Containers, um, which is a, a, a you know, high-level project, and the new one is Zool. Uh, talking about CI/CD, so there are things that will work with OpenStack, but not exclusively for, for OpenStack. Might not even come from OpenStack. Um, so, so those are things that we're seeing. Uh, you know, for example, I, I was at the Veeam show uh, last week, and there was a software company, N2WS, that Veeam had bought, and that solution 
only worked on Amazon to start. And uh, you know, I was at the Nutanix show the week before, and there's lots of things that start in like the Amazon environment and then make their way to the on-premises world. So we know it's a complex world. Uh, you know, I, I agree with you. The, Cloud is not getting simpler. Remember when cloud was the swipe the credit card and it's super easy? The line I've used a lot of times is it is actually more complicated to buy, quote, a server equivalent in the public cloud than it is if I go to the website and have something that's shipped to my data center. It's, yeah, it's kind of ironic that that's where we've ended up. Um, you know, we'll see. I, with, uh, with the Zool, it'll be very interesting. Uh, one of the hits, again, on OpenStack has been uh, reinvention of, of the wheel. Like, uh, can you interoperate with other projects rather than doing yourself? It sounds like there's some actually some very interesting aspects to it as a CI-CD system, and certainly it uses stuff like Ansible, so it's, it's built using open source components, but other open source components. But you know, what, what, what does this give us advantage for infrastructure people and allowing infrastructure to go live in a CI CD way, software on, on, on hardware, rather than uh, the ones that have been built from the, the, the dev side, the app side. I am assuming there's good reasons, uh, or they wouldn't have done it, but we, you know, we'll see. There's still a lot of projects inside the open source uh, 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 umbrella. Yeah, and you know, last year we talked about it, and once again we'll talk about it here. The ecosystem has shifted. Uh, there are uh, some of the kind of big traditional infrastructure structure companies, but what they're talking about ha has changed a lot. You know, remember a few years ago, um, it was you know HP, thousand people, billion dollar investment. Uh, you know, IBM has been part of OpenStack since the you know the very beginning days, but it changes. Even company like Rackspace, who helped put together uh, this environment, the press release that went out was, oh, we took all the learnings that we did from OpenStack, and this is our new Kubernetes uh, service that we had. Uh, something that I saw, uh, actually Randy Bias, who we'll have on the show this week, was on the first time we did this show five years ago. Can't believe it's the sixth year uh, we're doing the show. Randy is always, uh, you know, an interesting conversation to poke at some of the sacred cows, um, and, and I'll use that analogy, of course, because he is the one that gave us the pets versus cattle uh, analogy, and he said, you know, we're spending a lot of time talking about it's not zero-sum game between OpenStack and Kubernetes, and containers are great, and isn't that wonderful? If we're talking about that so much, maybe we should just like go do that stuff uh, and not worry about this. So it'll be, it'll be fun to talk, talk to him. The Open Dev Show is being main sponsored by Mirantis, who, Last time I was here in Vancouver was the OpenStack company, and now like I, I saw them a year ago, and they were the Kubernetes company and making those changes. So we'll have Boris on and get to find out the, these companies. There's not a lot of VCs here. The press and analysts that are here, most of us have been here for a lot of time, so this ecosystem has changed, has changed a lot. Uh, but um, while attendance is down a little bit from what I've heard from previous years, there's still some good energy, people are learning a lot. So Stu, I, I did want to point out that something I noticed on the stage that I didn't see um, was a lot of infrastructure, right? OpenStack, clearly an infrastructure stack. I think we've teased that out over the past couple years, but I didn't see a lot of talk about uh, the storage subsystems, networking, management, like all the kind of hard infrastructure plumbing that actually everybody here does, as well as a few names. So that was interesting. But at the end of the day, I mean, you, you've got to appeal to a, the, the whole crowd here. Yeah, well, one of the things, we spent a number of years making that stuff work. Back when it was, you know, we are talking about getting Cinder, and then all the storage companies lined up with their various do we support it? Is it fully integrated? And then even further, does it actually work really well? So same stuff that we went through for about a decade in virtualization. We went through this in OpenStack. We actually said a couple of years ago, some of the basic infrastructure stuff has gotten boring, so we don't need to talk about it anymore. Ironic uh, is actually the non-virtualized environments. Uh, that's the project that they have here. Um, we have a lot of people, we're talking bare metal, we're talking containers. So that has shifted. Um, it's an interesting one in, in, in the keynote is you had you know, the, the top level sponsors getting up there. Intel bringing around a lot of their ecosystem partners, talking about Edge, uh, talking about the tele telecommunications. Red Hat uh, giving a recap of what they did last week at their summit. Uh, they've got a nice cadence. Uh, the last couple of years they've done Red Hat Summit and OpenStack Summit back to back so that they can get that, uh, that flow of information through. And uh, then Mark Shuttleworth, who we'll, we'll have on a little bit later today, uh, came out punching. You know, he started with uh, some motherhood and apple pie about uh, how, how Ubuntu is any, everywhere, but then it, 
was like, and we're going to be so much cheaper and we're so much easier than the VMWares and Red Hats of the world. Um, and uh, there, there was a little bit of pushback from the community that maybe that wasn't the right platform to do it. Yeah, I, I think the room got kind of cold. I yeah. mean, that's kind of a church in there, right? And everyone is an open source believer. And uh, this kind of invisible hand of capitalism <laughs> reached in and, and wrote uh, on the wall and, you know, having written then left. But so, but at the end of the day, right, we gotta, somebody's got to pay for the baby's new shoes. Yeah. Um, I think that it was also very interesting seeing at the Red Hat Summit, which I covered on theCUBE, Red Hat's argument was fairly philosophical and from first principles. Containers are Linux, therefore Red Hat, right? And that's like, that was a logically laid out. Uh, Mark's, actually I love Mark's, the, the Mark's, uh, most of his speech, is, which was very practical. This, you know, Ubuntu is going to make both OpenStack and containers simpler, faster, quicker, and cheaper. So it was clearly benefits. And then, um, for the you know, folks that don't know, then he put up a couple of Crazy Eddie slides, like limited time offer, if you're here at the show, here's a, here's a deal that we put together for you. So that was a little bit unusual for a keynote. Yeah, well, and there are a lot of users here, and some of them will hear that, and they'll say, yeah, you know, I, I've used Red Hat there, but you can save me money, that, that's awesome. Let me, let me find out some more about it. Um, all right, so uh, we've got three days of coverage here, here, John, and we, we get to cover the, this really kind of broad ecosystem that we have here. Um, you talked about what we don't discuss anymore, like the major release was Queens, and it used to be that was where I would study up and be like, oh, okay, we've got Hudson, and then we got, you know, it was the letters of the alphabet. It's like, okay, what's the next one going to be, and what are the major features? Um, it's reached a certain maturity level that we're not talking the release anymore. It's more like the discussions we have in cloud, which is sometimes here some of the major things, and oh yeah, it just kind of wraps itself in. Um, deployments still probably aren't nearly as easy as, as, as we'd like. Uh, as Shuttleworth said, uh, two guys in under two weeks, that's awesome, um, but there are solutions we can put a stand up much faster than that now. Two weeks, way better than some right, of the historical right. things we've done, uh, but, it, but it changes uh, quite a bit. So. Um, Telecommunications, still a hot topic. Um, edge is something that, uh, you know, when I think back, it was like, oh, all those NFV conversations we've had here, it's not just the SDN, uh, you know, changes that are happening, but this is the edge discussion for the telcos um, and, and something people are getting their arms yeah. around. So, Super interesting to think of the cloud out on, on telephone poles and in, uh, in uh, branch offices and data center, you know, in, in closets basically, or under desks yeah, almost. No, no self-driving cars up on the keynote stage though. No, nothing that flat, flashy <laughs> this year. No, def definitely not too flashy. So uh, the foundation itself, um, it's interesting. We, we've heard rumors that maybe the show will change name. The foundation will not change names. Um, so I uh, want to give you, uh, last things, what, what are you looking for this week? What were you hearing from the community leading up to the show that you want to validate or poke at? Well, I want to look at real deployments. I'd like to see how standard we are. If, we are, uh, if, a, if an OpenStack deployment is standardized enough that the pool of talent is growing, and that if I hire people from outside my company who've worked with OpenStack, I know that they can work with my OpenStack. I think that's key for the continuation of this ecosystem. Um, I, I want to look at the general energy and how people are, are deploying it, whether the, it does become really invisible and boring, but still important, or, um, or does, you know, do you end up running OpenShift on bare metal? Which, I, as an infrastructure person, I just can't see that the app platform should be have to worry about all this infrastructure stuff because it's complicated. And so uh, I'll just be looking for the healthy productions and production deployments and see how that goes. Yeah, and, and I love one of the things that they started many years ago. They have a super user uh, category where they give it an award, and I'm excited. We actually have the Ontario Institute for Cancer Research is one of our guests on today. Uh, they won the 2018 super user group. It's always awesome when uh, you see not only it's like, okay, CERN's here, and they're doing some really cool things, looking for the Higgs boson and all those kinds of things, but you know, companies that are using technology to help them attack the battle against cancer. So you, you, know, you can't beat things like that. Um, we've got uh, the, the, the person from the keynote, uh, Melvin, who's up on stage talking about the open lab, you know, community ecosystem, uh, definitely something that resonates. I know mm -hmm. one of the reasons I pulled you into this show uh, you know, last year is that you've got a strong background right. there. Super impressed by all the community show. activity. I mean, this, this still feels like a real community. Lots of pictures of people, lots of real exhortations from stage to like, we who have been here for years know each other, please come meet us. So that's a real sign of also right. a healthy community so, dynamic. So John, first of all, I want to say happy Victoria Day, because we are here in uh, Vancouver, and we've got a lot 
uh, of, of going on here. It's a beautiful venue. Uh, hope you'll join us for, for all of the coverage here. And I have to give a big shout out to uh, the, the, the companies that allow this to happen. We are independent media, but we can't survive without the funding of our sponsors. So first of all, the OpenStack Foundation helps get us here uh, and, and gives us this lovely location overlooking outside. Uh, but if it wasn't for uh, the, the likes of our headline sponsor, Red Hat, as well as uh, Canonical, Contron, and Nuage Networks, we would not be able to bring you this content. So be sure to check out thecube.net for all the coverage. For John Troyer, I'm Stu Minun. Thanks so much for watching theCUBE.